Hello, and welcome back to another tutorial on Soul. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can load and handle external sound files. So in the previous videos, we've always relied on signals that come from outside of Soul, either in the online IDE or the physical input of our system. And we're going to change that today. I'll show you how to load an external .wav file and how to do operations with it. This is especially interesting if you want to write a sampler or something like a granular synth, but also if you want to evaluate a compressor you wrote on one of your favorite songs or whatever, uh, the possibilities are endless here. So um, yeah, use that to your advantage. So to demonstrate this, I will make a simple processor into which we can load a mono audio file. Uh, handling stereo or any multi-channel signals in general is slightly more elaborate, and I'll dedicate another video to that. So let's just deal with a simple mono file that I have on my hard drive. What I basically want is a processor that plays back my file repeatedly, so it's essentially looping it. To do this completely from scratch, it's a good opportunity to recap the commands that we have to make a new soul patch. Again, we type soul create, followed by the desired patch name, and this dash dash output flag will give us some template code that does a simple gain operation for us. as you can see here. Uh, we can delete most of these operations for now. OK, so let's think this through. The signal that we want is actually not coming from anywhere outside of Seoul. So what we can do is we can totally delete the input stream here. A processor does not necessarily need an input in order to work. It does, however, always need an output. So there are two things we need to do. One is we need to think about what the audio file would look like under the hood in Seoul. We can totally say that the audio file is nothing but an array of floating point numbers. So I'll just say that this should be a member of my processor, which I call audio file. I will keep the length of the array unspecified for now, as this is something that our patch simply cannot know just yet. Since we do not provide this information to Soul just yet, the second thing we need to do is to tell it that when we start running the Soul patch, it needs to look for some additional data. This is done by the external keyword that's preceding our member variable here. So Sol knows that it has to look for an audio file, but it does not know where to look just yet. If we were to run this, we would actually get a corresponding error message. To solve this, we need to open this other file that we keep getting, this .solpatch file. We can see that it very much looks like a .json file, and it has a similar purpose in the sense that it is a container for information, that the host application needs in order to run a patch. You can think of it as some sort of plugin standard similar to VST or AU, but with some other capabilities. You have some simpler data fields, like the manufacturer name that you can fill with your ultra edgy plugin company name, or you can specify source files in case you have multiple .sol files that make up your processing chain. At a certain size and complexity, this will definitely make sense to do, but I'll leave it as is for now. There are also some other fields that transmit information to the host, such as a flag that tells it whether the plugin is a MIDI instrument or an audio effect. So another field that we need to add here is called externals. And in this field, we need to provide one pair of information. We provide the name to our processor to which we want to link an audio file, followed by two columns. And then we write out the name of our external variable. The other part we need to add is the path to our audio file. In this case, it's sitting in the same directory as my soul file. And if we were to run this again, we actually got rid of our error message. So we've resolved this so far. And the last thing we need to do is the actual processing code. I will switch back to our processor code right here. What we essentially want to do is we want to iterate over our array, output the current sample, and then increment our index. We could be extra smart and go, hey, we can use a wrap type for this. And the thought is great. But it's impossible to do in this case, um, because we still don't know the size of our array just yet. And this is what this wrap type always requires. So I will just make a simple integer member variable, which I call sample index. We can then emit the value that we read from the array on our sample index. And then we need to increase our sample index using this plus plus notation that you might know from other languages. And to still make use of our built-in bounce checking, we can use another built-in function. 
It's also called wrap, but it's not a type. It's a function, and it requires two arguments. One is the variable itself we want to do bounce checking on. The other is the value that we do not want to surpass when incrementing. If we do, then the value gets simply wrapped around. And unlike raw arrays, like we have in C, sol arrays actually come with a member variable called dot size that we can use here. So let's try that, and we can see that it works. So we've looked at our command line tools again. We know how to tell sol to look for external files. We also know that we need to provide the corresponding file info in the .sol patch file. And we took a look at how to perform safe bounce checking for arrays, of which we don't know the size just yet. So as promised, we'll take a look at stereo data in the next video. Until then, take care and stay safe.